We are headed out on another fun road trip, and we're going to share our experiences with you driving our 2022 Tesla Model Y performance from Northern LA County, Santa Clarita, California, as many viewers already know, up to Mammoth Lakes, California for some snow fun, sledding and tubing and snow and ah, cold. So we're going to have all the cold weather tips packed into this video, cold weather charging, what to bring, like uh, chains in case there's heavy snow. We're going to try snow socks if we have the opportunity and all kinds of other stuff that uh, is cold weather related. So stick around. We're going to do our best to uh, just pack this thing full of winter tips here on Tesla Tips and Trips. That's two of them right there. Three. We got the Tesla. We got the tips and we got the trips. All right, so this is our Model Y. Now we have done this trip in the winter with our Tesla Model 3. It took a little more creative uh, packing, but it is still doable if you've got a Model 3. But here we go with the frunk first and foremost. Here is how we are packing it. All of our giant, puffy, warm winter jackets, as well as boots, all of our boots right there are in the frunk. I also pack, I don't know if I can even get to it, a uh, battery jump starter, there it is. So I keep the battery jump starter in the frunk. Why? Because if the car is dead and needs a jump start, you need to access this panel here with a nine volt. That will be enough juice to pop the frunk. And then from there, I can take the, um, the jump starter, pop this open and jump start the 12 volt that's inside there. So that's the thinking behind that. Now let's go to the uh, trunk and show you what we got going on there. Of course, we've got our modern spare here. Not a sponsor, but definitely what we like to carry on our road trips. And so here is our Tesla Model Y performance trunk. And inside here we've got, of course, we've got uh, snowball makers, uh, gloves, triangles, toilet paper, because you never know. Uh, inside this bag we've got, we've got a brush and a scraper on the other side. It's a dual-sided kind of thing. Um, we do have inside this bag here with the Tesla, we've got the uh, mobile charger if we need it. Down here, we've got the jack. We've got extra bags in case of sickness. We've got a little uh, a tire stopper here just in case we're on a slight incline or whatever. We've got a CCS adapter for this car just in case. So that's the uh, sub trunk. And then here is where all the uh, good stuff is. Let me show you this. I'll pull this out this over here, fold this. So these are the items that we hope we don't ever need. So we've got snow socks here, which I have tested. I'll show you a picture of that on the rear wheels of this uh, all wheel drive. We've got snow chains in case it really gets bad. Tire repair kit right here. Tiny little shovel just in case. First aid kit. So in this thin little sub trunk, I can fit all this stuff. And these are, again, the items that I hope we don't need, but um, definitely a, a good, you can pack a lot of stuff in this uh, tiny, thin sub trunk area, in addition to the actual sub trunk. And then, of course, over here, we've got uh, extra waters, bags. Over here, we've got some detailing stuff, uh, windshield wiper, uh, cleaner, garbage bags, paper towels. So that's kind of what our thinking is in terms of packing. And then, of course, we've got uh, the there's a chance of rains so for bringing umbrellas we've got our sleds we've got our uh, ikea bags ikea bags are great for trips all of our gloves and hats are packed into there so uh we'll get all of this plus two suitcases into here and i'll show that to you next hey if you're enjoying our videos and tips and trips and tricks and all that kind of stuff we totally appreciate it if you hit that like button on uh, your screen there or subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already almost 10,000 subscribers so far we are blown away by that are you one of them thank you so much if not become one of the next few. It would be so awesome. So like, subscribe, hit the bell. Now back to the video. And we're about ready to go here. So this is what the trunk looks like fully packed. Of course, we got our backpacks, laptops, uh, luggage here. We got a bunch of jackets and stuff stuffed in here. Of course, we've got a bag full of EVs for racing in the hotel, uh, sleds, jackets, cooler, and we still have a little bit room here, I think, and a little stuffing room in here. Of course, packing when we leave is gonna be a lot harder for some reason, but uh, that's what it looks like.
All right, so we drove through the canyon from our house to, uh, where are we, Lancaster. We got some uh, Jersey mics over there that took forever. I recommend using your app and uh, ordering ahead because otherwise it's 20 minutes, uh, you shouldn't be sitting here. We are navigated to a new supercharger, at least to us. How new is it for real though? When did it open, do we know? Pretty recently, right? I think late last year. Late last year, okay. Uh, Mojave, there are three supercharger locations in one uh, parking lot near the Stater Brothers, and this is one that we haven't uh, been to yet, so we are navigated to it, and we are on our way. We've been uh, preconditioning since we took off from uh, Lancaster, California. We are due to arrive at the new, well, new to us anyway, somewhat new to everybody else, uh, Mojave, and uh, we're due to arrive at 35%, which is probably okay. really pretty close, considering we are 14 miles away. So we should get to full speeds. I think last I checked, I don't know, Hannah, can you uh, scroll up? Last I checked, it was 11 superchargers available, stalls. Well, we have our choice there. So, I mean, if, if we can't find one at the one that says 11, we've got the 18, a 10, and there's one in town also. It's all in the same parking lot. So uh, this is the funny uh, uh, location. into Mojave a little uh, history Tesla history that is there used to be only one location here and it was a six stall uh, V2 150 kilowatt now we've got four different locations three in the same parking lot which is the one we're look, uh, going to and then there's another one here next to the Wiener Schnitzel I think we've been on a, a, there at a, a previous video um, very weird location for parking and stuff Anyway, we're going to move on to uh, our location and we're going to show you the three different superchargers in one parking lot here in Mojave. Uh, Mojave is like a convergence of people traveling uh, to and from Bakersfield, Los Angeles, Las Vegas, and Mammoth. So um, and it makes sense that this is a hub for uh, fast charging, supercharging, soon to be all EVs because they're going to be opening up the supercharger network. So that'll be interesting to watch. So we're in a new restaurant, I guess. It's called The Works. I don't remember seeing this here before. Now you have arrived at your destination. And so we gotta flip around this parking lot here. Oh, there they are on the back side of entering. Oh, you can see right in front of us all the planes I was telling you about. Pretty weird. So they must have an uh, airport. They do. To land it, or a it's runway, I should say. It's Edwards. So this is very interesting. Here is The Works. The other one. So we're gonna just uh, back in and plug her in. This is very different. This is weird. So how do we get out of here again? Just right. that way and out. Yeah. yeah. It'll drive right by the other one and the third one. These are really, really big parking spots. Huh. So they paved. That's interesting. They paved the supercharger <laughs> spots, but not the road ahead. All right, let's plug her in and see where we're going next. Weird that the stall is behind the car and not uh, usually off to the right of the car. Yeah, that's true. All right, we plugged in. Let's go see what we got. Here we go. Ramp it up. 128, 141. 176, 187, 193, 198, come on 200, oh 188, why'd it drop again? 191. All right, well it's gonna hover around that area right now. We are charging, we're gonna enter in our destination, then I'm gonna show you where the other superchargers are. I guess it's kind of the same parking lot because I could see the pavement continuing on that way. And I don't know if you can see right between there, there's one supercharger kind of hanging out there. All right, we're going to pop in our destination, see where we're going next. So the location we're at, that is uh, next to the Works, which looks like a, a really cool burger place. I love the name of it. They're getting really descriptive now that they're all close together now. Mojave, California, California-14. And you can see 
that's all the different chargers that's here. That's the, uh, the other one. And then the next one is 16870. And then this one's just so obvious. And that's the original. That's the OG right there. That used to be a six stall. That became, what'd you say, a 12 stall now? Oh, it is yeah, a 12 stall. It a 12 didn't become an eight stall or something like that? Yeah, they, 10 added, stall? they added Urbans and then added V4s. All right, so we tried to uh, navigate to Bishop. It didn't like that, didn't think the car was gonna make it. I think it can, but I don't really wanna hyper mile today. I'd rather, you know, drive like a normal human. So we have uh, navigated to Lone Pine. Looks like right now we could just like barely make it at 0%. But uh, so we're gonna stay here, eat some lunch and get enough to uh, go to Lone Pine. So just walking through this parking lot, you can see there is a, another supercharger location right through here which I don't even see any cars there. There's like nobody even charging at that location. And then beyond that location, over there where the buildings are, looks like it says Fat Boys Tacos. That's the original Mojave uh, Supercharger. It used to be a six stall, now it's a 12. And they've got a bunch of uh, Urbans, they've got V2s, they've got V3s, it's pretty cool. So this entire parking lot, um, just take your pick uh, for superchargers. And then over here, like I was showing you earlier. Oh, where'd they go? Yeah, the airplanes. There they are. Right to the right of the tree there, you can see the uh, the airplanes. It's kind of like an airplane graveyard. And um, I don't know if they just pick them for parts or just leave them there or what's going on, but uh, it's kind of famous. If you're in the Mojave area, if you want to take a look, there you go. I can see Japan Airlines, a couple of them right there. Interesting location for sure. Uh, across the parking lot, we've got a Stater Brothers. We've got that taco place. Um, so there are definitely um, some amenities to uh, check out here in Mojave. All right, we are good to go. We're going to unplug and be on our way. We had our lunch. Very cool. Take a look at what we got before we uh, head on out. So navigating to Lone Pine, we are due to arrive at 28% state of charge. We'll see how that uh, holds true or not. And uh, hopefully we have enough. We are currently at 212 miles or 75%. So let's head on out and go to Lone Pine, which we are very, very familiar with Lone Pine. We've been there many times, but you're gonna add? Uh, they added, they doubled it. It's been updated, yeah. So we haven't seen that yet uh, since they've uh, added stalls. So that's gonna be kind of cool. We're going to head on out, and I'm going to show you the rest of this particular location across the parking lot. All right, so leaving the location that we just charged at near the works, which is a burger place, which looks actually pretty good. We're going to go across this parking lot real quick and then head on out. We can see superchargers here in the middle of the parking lot, off to your left there, which nobody seems to be using. Boy, this is a very, very unpaved... Oh, there was a couple of stalls that we just passed. Oh, that's random. And there's a little tiny parking lot of more superchargers here. A lot of them. Check that out. That's tight though. I mean, if you, if it gets so busy that it, you have to use these, it's really tight. And then over here is the original. This is the original six stall and then they updated it to double it. I remember one time we had to wait here in our Model 3 because there was only six stalls and I think there was like three or four cars deep. Nobody's even here now. So uh, lots to choose from here. Not a single Tesla at this location. And you can see this little uh, area off to my right here. That's the addition right there. Which is oh yeah, paved they now. paved it. Yeah, and it used to be rocks, you're right. Yeah. So uh, there's a little tour of all the Mojave Superchargers. I'm gonna try to get over past this crane that's coming down. In fact, they added these four. There was just those two. No, weird those ones. four were there. Oh, they were. Hmm. On our way to Lone Pine. It's down to 30% now arrival. Which what was it before? 32. concerned here and I'm going to show you why we've noticed over the last half hour we've been keeping an eye on our next destination of Lone Pine 
And at first glance, oh great, 16 stalls available. That's awesome. It's wide open. Nobody's there, right? But then I got thinking, what if it's like blocked or iced or maybe it's not reporting to Tesla properly and who knows? I've never seen a supercharger wide open for this long of a period. Like it's been at least a half hour and it's a holiday weekend Friday. So there's a lot of traffic on the roads and stuff. So where is everybody? Now that said, when we were in Mojave, it was pretty empty there too. So I guess we'll see when we get there, but I don't know. We refer to this as the giant ant hill. Come to find out it's actually, what, a, it's a tiny volcano? Yep. Uh, right afterwards is Coso Junction, which does have an Electrify America and usually a rest stop charging situation, but it's not working right now. So there's the ant hill. And over here, you can see we're almost at the snow. At least the Eastern Sierra Pinnacles. We're thinking, we're hoping, uh, this is a software bug in that if you notice all the lightning bolts, it's superchargers that we can't make it to. So for some reason, it's showing that for Lone Pine, even though we know we can make it there, the car should know we can make it there. But that's why we're not getting any details out of Lone Pine. It just shows 16 stalls available. I can thank Marcus for uh, steering me in the right direction on that one. Um, but we're not getting any numbers on how many Teslas are there or even if it's in use or down or nothing. So uh, I guess we'll find out together. just popped up on the screen. Now we have numbers. So we know that there are people charging at Lone Pine. Seven stalls available at the 16. It's a V3, so we are good to go. I don't know what was going on. All the red uh, flags in the area were lightning bolts only. We could not see anything nearby as being used or, or whatever. So I don't know if it was a software glitch. We rebooted the, the whole car, yes, while driving. Um, but maybe it was something on Tesla's end that it just wasn't showing anything. So it, was, it seemed like as soon as we started preconditioning for the second time that the numbers started showing up. So uh, we are good to go to Lone Pine. Rolling into Lone Pine, this is not our first time here. We've been here many times actually, but this is the first time it's been expanded. Uh, it's gone from an eight stall to a 16 stall, and now it looks like we've got a bathroom or whatever you call that, outhouse. So uh, here we go. Oh, and garbage. Wow. Ooh. This is pretty cool. I'm going to stagger even though we don't have to. These are V3s. We don't actually have to have spaces, but everybody else is doing it. So I'm going to do it because we don't want to be different, right? This is very cool. This was much needed. And in fact, I think at some point they're going to need even more because uh, lots and lots of people travel between Mammoth and Los Angeles. So here we are. Let's plug it in. Take a look at the amazing views too. Looks like we got a, a Starlink uh, satellite for internet there. That's new. Here we go. Plug her in and we're gonna uh, navigate to Mammoth and see how long we need to be here for. Check this out. This is funny because I think everybody was, um, you know, peeing anywhere they wanted. So museum and gift store, clean restrooms. That's new, right? McDonald's. Or McDonald's, which is over that away. Maybe we'll get a shake or something. Check out the view though. The views here are incredible, especially in the winter. We've been here in summer and winter, and this is one of the more beautiful views uh, for a supercharger. Check out these garbage cans. These are beefy. Last time I was here, they had um, like wooden barrel garbage cans. We got to switch. So, what's going on? We have to switch. But why? Because we're only at 33 kilowatts. All right, we're going to go ahead and switch. Let's hop out and do it. Why'd you move all the way over here? Just to bug you. <laughs> all right, let's see if we're any faster this time. Oh, looking good so far. 17, yeah, 51, better than 72. 
These are V3s, right? Because mm -hmm. we just maxed out at 72, which tells me these might be V2s. Well, maybe those are the V3s. It's, it's a little weird, right? I told you you should have parked in the one right next to... Yeah, I think we got a mix of... Um, Why would there there's V3 cabinets right here? I'm telling you, it looks like we're sharing. Does it not? They don't add V2s. I'm telling you, we are primed and ready, completely warm. These should be screaming like those are usually, we're at 250. So go ahead and unplug. We're gonna move it again and, and move over there and see what happens. One. Let's try number three. So those other ones had to have been sharing because it topped out at 72 and just fell off. It just stopped. And there is no way, because I've been here before, these are usually screaming at 250 kilowatts. So let's see what we got now. Unless something's really weird. 80, so we're ready faster than that. You know, something's weird with these today. Yeah, I know these usually run at 250 kilowatts, maxed out. So, looks like we're gonna be here a little bit. Very strange. Okay, so an update, we had that uh, incident where it uh, maxed out at 72 kilowatts. It was acting like a V2. And turns out our battery was cold according to the app. There was even a little blue notation on the battery. And so once it warmed up, we saw speeds of, uh, I think it topped out at 130. Still slower than the 250 we're used to seeing here, but you know, weird factors. We drove all the way from Northern LA County to Lone Pine and the battery was still not optimized, not preconditioned, not warm enough. So those of you going from home to, you know, a supercharger three miles away on your way to work, <laughs> you're never ever gonna get it warm enough. So Lone Pine expanded. This was the originals over here. Actually, technically, the originals were over there at one point. Then they moved them over here. So those six and those first two. And right there. Eight. And then so they expanded this way. And it looks like they have more room. I mean, they could probably build a bunch here. Build a parking so, lot. Now. There's a blue one coming in hot. All right, we got some McDonald's. Shamrock Shakes are back in business. That's cool. Uh, let's go take a look at what we're looking at and see when we can leave. All right, we are ready to go. Got a little buffer. We're heading up a major incline, uh, colder weather. Let's take a look at uh, our stats. All right, let's take a look at uh, what we got going on here. We've got to 83% uh, charge on the battery or 236 miles. We are headed to the brand new supercharger in Mammoth. We have never been to this one. It's at an ice rink. They built the ice rink first and then the supercharger or maybe at the same time, I don't know. And we are uh, looking to arrive at 18% uh, state of charge. So uh, let's get on our way. We will leave Lone Pine, the all new updated Lone Pine. Thankfully, I mean, if you could take a look at this, thankfully they added the eight extra stalls because otherwise we'd be sitting in a line right now because it used to be just eight stalls. So we've got uh, that side, this side, a couple over here. So uh, definitely a good move, Tesla, for uh, updating Lone Pine. Let's get out. That was kind of a weird charging session. We uh, started really slow. We moved around a couple of times to see what was going on and turned out our battery was slightly cold, which makes no sense. We drove all the way up from Los Angeles already. You would think that preconditioning would have helped and the driving would have helped. And um, But the views here, I can't think of another supercharger that is this gorgeous. Now turn left onto South Main Street. It's just amazing. Just an amazing location in terms of views. On we go to Mammoth, the brand new supercharger there. About 100 miles away. This is where you go to Whitney Portal. Yes, if you take a left right here at this light, you go up to Whitney Portal. We highly recommend it. There's a video on the channel of us showing you uh, everything that's up there. Uh, definitely a summer thing, but uh, very cool up there. to get uh, going on this incline here. We're 
going uh, up to Mammoth Mountain. It's about 8,000 feet up there. So we are starting our climb at 50% state of charge. It is estimating us to get there at, uh, what is that, 28%, and it's only a 29 mile drive. So we're gonna lose, what is that, 32% just uh, climbing this hill. Um, the interesting thing for new Tesla owners, if you're coming from a gas car, you will not feel the incline at all. You're gonna drive up this hill like everyone else is standing still, it's not a problem. You don't feel any lag or chugging or anything difficult about it. In fact, you could floor it and, and just take off. So uh, we're already at 49% uh, for you mileage people, 139 miles on the battery and uh, 28 to go. many times it used to be just a park right there and now holy cow it's a massive structure were like at that ice skating you thing at your destination. At I saw them. wow so it's in this location with the uh, LA Kings ice is what it says at Mammoth Lakes so uh, it's a 12 stall uh, v3 and looks like it's iced. A couple of spots are iced. I don't know if this Volvo, I think they're parking on, yeah, they're parking on destination chargers. This giant pickup truck, of course, is, uh, oh, it does say general parking. So let's pull in and charge up. You're right, it's not that cold. Let's plug her in and see what kind of speeds we're going to get. Now, we've already supercharged twice. We've driven, you know, a couple hundred miles. It's weird that and we have preconditioned for supercharging here. So here we go. Ramping up. Very loud. Yeah, definitely V3s. 156, this is better than Lone Pine. It's 174. 204. We're getting really good speeds here. This is great. Interesting that the cooling kicked in at a place that's cold. 234. Will we see max? I don't know. I think it's going to be just shy of max. 236. Okay, so you might be wondering why are we charging before we go to the hotel, before we go out to dinner? Why are we charging as we arrived into town here in Mammoth? Well, the answer is simple. If you're new to electric cars uh, or new to Teslas, the idea here is we just spent all day driving. We've supercharged twice. It's been preconditioned multiple times. So the battery is the warmest it's gonna be all day long. If you wait till tomorrow, uh, in the morning, it's gonna charge really, really slow and take a while for the battery to warm up again, and it's just not a good thing. So we are charging basically for the weekend right now when the battery is warmest, you saw the speeds, and so that way we are good for the uh, entire weekend, and hopefully we can get all the way back down the mountain and charge after uh, driving a little bit in the morning on Monday. So that's the reason, just a little tip for you, uh, 
charge when you roll into town if you're heading somewhere cold and you spent all day driving you're gonna you're, you're gonna not regret it because uh like i said if you wait until the morning it's gonna be freezing cold battery's gonna be cold soaked and you're gonna have slow speeds This is pretty far from King's territory. Definitely one of the more uh, unique Tesla supercharger locations here, the new Mammoth supercharger location. Uh, we got the superchargers right outside, as you can see, yep, beyond there too. I don't know if you can see our car, you can see that white X over there. But inside here, this is pretty cool. Checking out a, uh, a hockey game while we're waiting to charge, having a little coffee, watching the hockey while the car charges. I mean, this is the kind of unique experiences you're gonna have with Teslas. Uh, it's not just, you know, going to a smelly gas station and getting uh, an overpriced soda. All right, we got about all we can get out of this uh, charge. We don't want to charge it too high, um, but we want to have enough for the weekend for uh, just driving around town and all that kind of stuff. I think, I think we should be okay. We'll see. We're going to probably lose, I'm guessing, 3 to 5% overnight. It's going to be super cold in the 20s. Um, and I, I'll turn off sentry mode, of course, to uh, preserve some of that. But um, we're at 86% state of charge, 244 miles on this 22 performance Y. And um, that's it. That should be enough to get us around town. This, this town is not that big. We're not going to, you know, be doing big drives or anything like that. So it's really about the coldness of the battery and, uh, you know, losing charge that way. So uh, I think we're good. Let's go unplug. And we'll head to our hotel, which is uh, like a mile away. So a very cool location here in Mammoth. This was not here last time we visited. Lots of stalls and even some um, L2s over there for, for longer term charging. If you're here for a hockey game, for instance, a couple hours, definitely get some uh, charge there. So there's these stalls here and then over by the the rink itself, there are two over there uh, with handicap stalls as well as a uh, an L2 as well. So here we go. We're done with Mammoth. Or we're done with the charging anyway. All right, another cool location. Yeah, this is a cool one. It's going to be interesting to see this in the summer. Got a chance to charge and a hockey game broke out in front of us. So we got a chance to watch some of that and the end of the game at that. So what was it? It was the Mammoth Stars and the Pasadena Leafs. Leafs. And who won? The Mammoth Stars. The Mammoth yeah. Stars won. So the home team won. Amazing how much travel these uh, kids have to do. All right, heading out for the morning. I checked the app. Uh, seems like we didn't lose too much range overnight. I turned off sentry mode, but it was pretty cold. Hey, there's an X. That's pretty cool. Uh, also preheated the car about 15 minutes before heading out right now. It was uh, 32 degrees or something like that inside. And now it's 72. And it also gave us the bacon. So the uh, it does warm up. It said uh, preconditioning the battery for optimal performance or whatever. And I'll show you that here on the screen right now. And there you go. So that's what you got to do when you're heading out in the winter. It was uh, in the 20s overnight. Uh, supposed to be, I don't know, 36, 7, maybe 40 degrees today. So uh, just got to get ready for those cold days and get the battery uh, preheated. And now we should be good to go. Uh, heading to Woolies Tubing Park. It's always a lot of fun. And they re 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 renovated, re renovated it uh, last time we were there. That's a hard word to say. Revamped. Revamped. I think that's what I was trying to say. Yeah, a little snow flurries. Oop, just ran over something. As we head into the uh, Mammoth Lakes Village, you can see they're building a new hotel slash ownership condo situation. There you see the crane. It's right in the corner of uh, the main area here with the uh, breweries right there you can see. I wonder how long that's going to take. That's going to be kind of cool. But we've noticed last night when we were at the grocery store, the Vons, literally like the store in town, it's just so busy they need to add more stuff, more restaurants, more 
everything. So here we go. This is the Mammoth Lakes Village. Uh, don't blink because you might miss it. Um, but in beyond these, these are actually hotels right there or condos. Uh, right behind that is all the stores and restaurants and ice cream and coffee shops. And this is the same way to the main lodge, but we're going to stop short because that's where uh, Woolies is. And just beyond Woolies is like crazy amount of parking and then they can bus you to the main lodge if it's really busy. So, but we're going to be stopping at Woolies. Woolies usually has enough parking, but we'll see today. All right, here we are. Woolies on the right hand side. There's an e-tron, perfect. It's like the third e-tron we've seen on this trip. And there is not really infrastructure for, um, infrastructure for charging. I just don't get it. Oh, wow, it's busy, isn't it? And I think it's full. We're gonna have an interesting time trying to park here. Park right there. Oh, there's parking, Never mind. And it began to snow. So here we are, Woolies. It seems like they're putting all the big people on the ground, like all the adults. Recording, here we go. Thank you. How was that? <laughs> hey, if you're enjoying our videos and tips and trips and tricks and all that kind of stuff, we totally appreciate it if you hit that like button on uh, your screen there or subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Almost 10,000 subscribers so far. We are blown away by that. Are you one of them? Thank you so much. If not, become one of the next few. It would be so awesome. So like, subscribe, hit the bell.